Okay, it is Shane Ricardo coming to you here from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And the reason for this video is, is I want to talk a little bit about multi-level marketing. Uh, maybe you've heard of it as network marketing, community-based marketing, and affiliate programs. You've heard lots of different reasons about pyramid schemes. You've heard lots of different things about multi-level marketing. Uh, for the purpose of this video, we'll call it multi-level marketing. And I wanted to talk a little bit about your, your jump into multi-level. Maybe you have had somebody approach you with an idea of earning income from home, something you've found that you're passionate about. Maybe you're passionate about makeup. Maybe you're passionate about health and fitness. Maybe you're passionate about uh, whatever it is that the person has uh, piqued your interest about. I wanted to make this a generic uh, video with regards to your journey in multi-level marketing. Uh, one of the most amazing industries I've been attached to, uh, the, the earning potential is endless. No matter what you want to make of it, you can make of it. If you apply yourself with intent and uh, throw yourself to um, your path and not allowing other people to stop you from getting to where it is that you feel in your gut that you can get to. So on your journey of multi-level marketing, what ends up happening is, is that you've piqued your interest. Your intuition says, you know what, your gut instinct says, you know, I want to go all, I want to go in with this thing. I want to go in. And what's going to happen very first is probably you're going to say your brain is going to come into play and it's going to say, are you sure you want to do this? Or, you know what, maybe such and such tried this before, or even you may have tried this before. You get a lot of different people talking about, uh, you know, I tried that one time before. It didn't work. That's a big excuse that we come up with. Or uh, when you decide, you know what, it did happen before, but you're going to try it again. It's an exciting time, an exciting time, because what's happened is, is normally when you try this the first time, what happens is, is that sometimes you're learning the hard way. You are doing it all on your own. That's the way that the system is, has uh, set us up for failure, the school system, the work system. Go and learn things before you go and do things. Uh, in the multi-level marketing world, if you're with a great company, they will literally tell you or explain to you, listen, we forged ahead. We have a system that's working here. Are you teachable? Are you coachable? Um, are you humble? Are you willing to check your ego at the door and dive into that? Uh, dive into a system that's already proven. And if you say yes, go with it. Don't play both worlds. What happens normally is, is that when you get involved, then you want to go out and prove that you can do this. Prove it to yourself. Prove it to the people who brought you in. You want to prove it. That's the ego thing. And we want you to kind of not, we don't want, we don't want you to kind of, we want you to not be that person. You don't have anything to prove. Right? If there's a way that was designed and formulated before you that was proven to work, it would make more sense to just jump in with that system. I did that with my support, and I got at least 10 times further than I did with my first multi-level marketing. My first multi-level marketing experience, what happened was it taught me a lot of what not to do. It taught me that if you do it by yourself, it doesn't work. So if you have an amazing company with an amazing product and amazing people, that are there to support you, I would ask if I was going into a multi-level company, multi-level marketing company, I would ask the people, what type of support systems do I have? What can I count on with you as a leader, as the person who brought me in? What are you bringing to the table? Okay, your, your, your product is your product, but your community is the power. What type of community does that company have? Uh, does it have a, a community of support and love and encouragement with tools to be able to help you learn and also help people you bring in to learn? Is it easy? Is it simple? Is it duplicatable? Those are some questions you want to ask anybody who's asking you to get involved with a multi-level marketing company. And I would ask that person, how connected are they to the original people? How connected are they to the people who originally developed that system that they're talking about? Because things tend to get watered down. You want to attach yourself to people who are, are more connected to those people who started that whole system. That makes sense? Hopefully that makes sense. So what's going to happen on your journey is this. This is, what, this is the psychology that I've studied over the course of the last four years. When you're starting in your multi-level marketing company, you are excited. You found something you believe in and you love. And it's been working for you and it's naturally, organically, it's, it's been, you've been sharing it with somebody else. And you've said to yourself, you know what? I may as well earn some money off of this. I'm sharing it anyways. Usually something around there. Sometimes people will jump into these and they will go all in. That's what I had done. I've gone all in. That's the type of person that I am. But let's talk about the average person, okay? The average person, the normal average person, will typically jump into a multi-level marketing company with full of excitement. 
And the first thing they want to do is they want to go and they want to introduce the product to somebody else. And it's usually their closest people to them. And that's called the warm market. Your warm market are people that automatically trust you based on your, your hot market is people who automatically will trust you to take something or to try something based on the fact that you've said to do it. Then there's your warm market. Your warm market are people that kind of trust you. They know you. They know of you. And you can reach out to them and feel very comfortable bringing up a conversation. And then there's your cold market. Your cold market are people who don't know you, don't trust you. They don't even know who you are. And then you're going to go and you're going to approach those people as well. well. Let's talk about your hot market. Your hot market is very simple. Uh, first and foremost, when you're growing in any company, you don't want to become a weirdo. You don't want to become the person that all of a sudden you were a stay-at-home uh, husband or a stay-at-home wife. Maybe you were a school teacher or maybe you were a... Um, you know, uh, worked at a grocery store, or maybe you worked in uh, at, at a library. I don't know where you worked, but you are you are uh, uh, marketed as who you are. So let's just say, for example, um, I was a librarian, and um, all of a sudden I got fired up in my belly with some sort of a product that was designed to maybe it was maybe it was a fuel source, a different fuel source for the body. All of a sudden, I'm like super excited about this, and I go talking about this fuel source and how it all works, such and so forth, to my hot market and my warm market, because they're the most comfortable people to go and talk to. They're the people that trust us. They're the people we feel comfortable to talk to. Those people are going to say to you, or say to themselves anyways, about you, well, that's Shane. He's a librarian. What does he know about fuel sources for the body? You went guns blazing and became a weirdo, and you were talking about all this technology and how it works and how it's great for you. When in actual fact, what you only need to do is just have a normal conversation and explain to these people that what it is that you're doing, what you're up to these days. What are you doing, Shane? What's going on with you? Well, I happen to just be, um, actually, things are great. Actually, they couldn't be better. I just started taking this stuff and it's made me feel X, Y, Z. That's enough. A person's going to come up with their own a natural logical conclusion of whether or not they want to try what it is that you're trying. Don't push it. You don't have to force it. You don't have to do anything. They'll come up with their own decision. What happens is eventually as we're doing this and we're approaching our warm and hot market, what happens is, is people will either decide to take the product or not, join you in the business or not, and you end up with your warm market getting to a certain level of success with your warm market. Some people will join. Some people won't. Some people will take it. Some people won't. But now you've blown through all of your warm and hot market and you've gotten to a level of success. So now you're up to here with your success. You've hit the ceiling of your success with your warm market. Then it starts getting a little bit uncomfortable because if you're at your ceiling of your warm and hot market, what's next? What's next is you need to go and go find more people because X amount of people in your warm and hot helped join you and took the product with you and you got to that level of success. Now the next thing to do is to now go and tackle your cold market. So your cold market is the most uncomfortable market for most to go and to introduce the product to. So the cold market usually doesn't, um, it isn't as easy for the cold market to join you because you have to build a level of trust, the trust that the warm and hot market had for you. So then what happens is, is these warm and hot market people end up maybe not taking the product anymore. Maybe their children needed braces. They hopped off the product. Something had happened. The transmission in the car went and they had to end up stop, stop, stop taking the, the, the product. And the sales from that warm and hot market start going down. And it's super uncomfortable for you to go, as this is shrinking, it's super uncomfortable for you to go and to fill those voids up with your cold market, right? So your cold market is over here, and you're not going to go tackle the cold market because it's uncomfortable. Right? You've never done that before. You don't really know them. It's a lot of hard work, you're thinking, because these people don't know you. They don't trust you. You have to go and break out of your shell. Meanwhile, your ceiling is shrinking. And so that eventually what happens is, is that your sales end up going low, lower, lower, and then you're still uncomfortable. Months have gone by, months have gone by. You failed to grow as a person in this business to tackle your cold market. And you failed for about four or five months of tackling your cold market. What happens is this ends up going way down. And usually what happens is, is somebody else is before you has gone through the same thing. And you're being led by your leaders who are doing the same thing or going through the same thing and they have heard something about another product or another company. And that particular product or company, what happens is, is they're like, wow, I found the next best thing. This is incredible. Meanwhile, you've been talking to all sorts of people about how incredible your product is. 
and they found the next best thing. And guess what? Now I found this. And this is even easier. This is even way better. And it's not that you, it's way better or way easier. What happens is, is now your warm market and hot market have gone way down to almost nothing. You've never built any new people over here with your gold market. And what happens is, is now you say, oh yeah, that is it. Because guess what? Now I can go all the way back to my warm and hot market again and with a whole new product because that's easier. It's way easier to go way back to your cold, to your warm and hot market. It's way easier to do that with a whole brand new product and get that to go right back up again. And that's why you have career people in multi-level marketing companies who've been at it for 30, 40 years and they've changed company, changed company, changed company, changed company. So when you're joining somebody who's been in a multi-level marketing company or community-based marketing or network marketing company, ask them, how many companies have you been in before? Okay, that tells you a lot about the person that you're joining. Have they gone through, hit the ceiling, come down, hit the ceiling, come down, or have they broken through that ceiling? Have they stuck with a company that they believe in? Look at their Facebook pages and go back a month, two, three, and see how that they were promoting themselves or their products on their Facebook, their social media. Were they just saying that my company was the best thing, best thing, best thing, and then jumped ship? If they've jumped ship, what normally happens is, is they were too uh, afraid, too scared to tap into the cold market to really grow, to break through that ceiling. That's the type of leader you want to have, have connected to yourself to. As a person that's gone through the ceiling and then broken through the ceiling and can teach you how to break through that ceiling because it's coming. It happens to every multi-level marketing person out there. You hit that ceiling if you're cold and hot and warm. So you're warm and you're hot market. You hit that ceiling. It starts shrinking. It's usually around the year and a half mark. You've finally blown through all of your, your, your hot and your warm market you've never gone into your cold market and you will blame it for not working anymore you will blame the product you will blame the people you will blame the community but in actual fact you have to look in the mirror and ask yourself did i really give my 100 percent? did i was i willing to grow was i willing to break through that ceiling that hit me it hits every network marketer it does and if you're willing to number one Stand side by side with your mentors and walk through and reach more of your warm and hot market with more success. So what happens is, is at the very beginning, there is a way to reach your warm and, and hot market to have more ratios of success than less success. So instead of getting 10% of your warm and hot, mar hot market, maybe you could get yourself 60, 70% of your warm market to join you in taking the product or joining you in the business. They know how to do that. The right leaders will know how to do that with you and they'll walk with you. They don't want you to forge ahead and to try yourself and learn the hard way and come up with the voices in your mind saying that this doesn't work, it's not for me, I'm a loser, these type of thoughts. Because you're going to go try and do it all on your own and we don't want you to do that. Have a company that has all the training. Have a company that has a community, loving, caring, supportive people. A community and uh, upline support that's going to support you where you are, but keep you in ever so slightly in that uncomfortable zone so you're growing. We want you to grow and blow past that ceiling with your cold market. Going back with a new product and to offer your hot and cold, your hot and, and warm market because it's easier for you is doing an injustice to that person because probably you found yourself at the beginning that amazing product, right? That amazing product. It's way easier for you to go all the way back with a new product that's probably subpar and go to that those people over there that are shrunken, shrunken down your warm and your warm and hot market have gone down and go back to them with a new product than it is for you to actually grow. And in life, we want growth. In life, we want you to become the best version of yourself, to become an incredible multi-level marketing person, an incredible stay-at-home work from home uh, partner. That's what we want for you. So when that offer of that new product comes in, ask yourself, ask yourself this. Does it sound better because of what I just mentioned to you about being able to go back to my warm and my hot market again? Or is it coming in to make it easier for you? Things in life don't come easy. They don't. They don't come easy at all. It takes the hard work. It takes the dedication. It takes consistency and willingness to grow. That's what we want for you. If you want any more information on how this all works, and you can reach out to me personally if you want to. I'm here to help you get past that ceiling. That ceiling. I want you to step outside and get to the clouds, get to the moon, get to the stars, get to the outer solar system. That's what I want for you. So Shamer Carl saying off here. I'm going to walk around, turn the camera off. Hopefully you got some value out of that. Have yourself a great day.